Okay, so this is gonna be the final van tour of our $3,000 2004 Ford Econoline. So come on in and I'll show you all the little things that we missed in the last video. I think it's been about a little over a half a year since we did our van conversion here. And we've been doing a couple trips out of it and it's been great so far. So I'm just gonna kinda go through and show you some of the details and things we like, some things that maybe we wish we would've done better. And you can just see how we did it and hopefully it'll help you out as you decide how to build your Econoline van. So one thing, obviously, I can't stand up. I'm about six foot two, and of course it would be nice to stand up, but it just wasn't worth the money right now to do that for us. Start out here in the kitchen. Got this little stool off Amazon, I think it was like $20, and it's a great little stool for camp as well. But it's also a great stool. You can sit here, we've got our sink, and here's the faucet. You just open this up and we've got a foot pump. And once the foot pump gets going, then you get your water and your sink. This is just a little RV sink. And this is just a uh, piece of wood, kind of a project panel you can get at Home Depot. And then we use some leftover water locks that we use for our kitchen counters inside, but you could use any kind of wood finish. And this is just a two by three uh, sanded down with some water locks on it in the back. And then here we've got our little towel inside here. We've got a Coleman stove, and then this is our fresh water supply that's just strapped onto the side of the cabinet here. So we can take it out for some other camping needs. And that goes into the foot pump, and then that comes back up behind the sink into the copper faucet here that we just braze together. Um, and then the drain just goes into this five gallon bucket You've seen some other videos online that show you the similar setup. It's a really easy setup, really simple, not a lot of moving parts, and of course, it's also very uh, budget friendly. Some other things we got in here, a little dustpan, um, some cups, and then what we use most often just to make coffee is just a jet boil. So this is the jet boil setup, and all that does is boil hot water for coffee or dehydrated food things like that. And then the Coleman, we'd actually use that outside the van for cooking, just to keep it clean. We don't really cook inside the van. Yet either We bought these, uh, uh, I think they're RV cabinet latches. You can get them on Amazon. They're probably, I don't know, $8 for five of them or something like that. Um, they work great and they just keep the cabinets closed while you're on the road. Really easy install. This is a little place for the sponge. So it's kind of fun just making all these little tiny things as you go along and just adding things uh, to make your life more convenient once you start camping and figuring it out. But moving up from our kitchen sink here, there's the little small cabinet up here. And I ended up, originally I wasn't gonna put on these little uh, hydraulic lifts, but uh, they were actually, again, pretty cheap on Amazon, so. And I installed uh, one of those on each one. And you can see back there, there's the electrical cabling. So it's all hidden behind the cabinets. And then over here, I just hid it behind a uh, piece of driftwood that's screwed in up there. This cabinet up here would be great for food storage. I've used it to store a fishing pole, just more storage. And then over here, we've got uh, our kind of closed storage. So this side is Ashley's. Um, right now it's just toiletries in there, so we're not going on a trip. Some extra clothes up there. And over here, same thing on this side, so those are my clothes. Plenty of storage for, you know, a few days of clothes in there. Or more than that, depending on how many times you need to do laundry. Okay, here's our last little cabinet unit, and this is actually the first one I made. Um, so in my last video, you can kind of see how you got to contour everything in the van, and it's kind of a challenge to do that. It's kind of fun. Um, but I'll open this one up, and you can see what's inside here. So this one is for food storage. This one's for all our dishes. They've all got the RV latches. And down here in the bottom is the inverter. So this is the inverter that 
converts uh, DC to AC. And if you want to see more about all the electrical stuff, you can watch my electrical video. Uh, it's a relatively simple electrical system. Altogether, it probably costs about eight or nine hundred dollars. Most of it being the battery, but it's uh, plenty enough to charge all kinds of things, including a little vacuum cleaner, um, a little speaker, all kinds of just little electronics. There's some cards down there too. It's more storage, and then underneath here, of course, we've got plenty of storage. Dirty laundry bag. This is uh. I go to the bathroom. This is my pee bottle. One of the best things. I'm about six foot two, and it's plenty of space for me. So I can actually, I can lay straight like this, and it's almost enough space, but I can get stretched out this way. And if the two of us are in here, it's a little bit tighter, but it still works just fine. So for the bed, we bought a mattress topper on Amazon. I think it was about five or six inches thick. And then it's got kind of a waterproof um, bag that we modified a little bit. Of course, we had to cut the mattress a little bit in order for it to fit exactly on this bed because this bed is not a common or regular normal size. So here's another thing I forgot to show in the last video is how the bed is actually attached to the floor. It's basically just held in with a bunch of these brackets um, tucked in here. It's obviously not, you know, the most sturdy attachment point ever for the bed, but I think it would take quite a bit for a pretty big accident to rip that out of the floor. See, we got our fan up here. We got our lights. These are just uh, LED lights. And the lights are on this light switch right here. So it's a dimmer switch. See a lot of people put this dimmer switch in. We love the dimmer switch. It's nice to have a dimmer switch because when you're in a parking lot or somewhere you don't really want people to know you're in the van, you can turn the lights down really low or you can have them really bright when you're camp actually camping. We obviously wanted some privacy curtains. For curtains, we ended up using kind of a poster board inside of a Reflectix on one side. There's actually a little piece of wood right there kind of a batten to keep it stiff. And then on this side, just some leftover fabric from a different project. And then Ashley sewed on a uh, kind of an edging here around the edges. And then they just hold up here with Velcro. And that's a great little privacy curtain in the back. So really easy to come off and super easy to put back on. We use some of that same fabric just to make a really simple curtain and it's basically just a piece of string uh, with some self drying screws holding the string in on the side there. The paneling on this door was a little bit trickier to get it to contour because you actually have to get it to kind of suck in right there for it to open properly so there's some a lot of screws over here that I use to try to get it to suck in and contour to that shape. Um, so another little thing that I didn't explain in the last video is how to do this edging. So this uh, door threshold has to come off, obviously. And then right now it's just sitting on top of the layer of polyiso foam and plywood underneath that. So you basically just have to use polyiso board and another piece of plywood underneath to bring it up a level. So it does make the step into the van, you know, about an inch higher to get into the van. All right, so back here we've got some storage. Right here, this is a concrete mixing bin from Home Depot. And it's just a great place for wet gear because we've always got wet river gear, neoprene stuff that we need to throw somewhere. So all that wet gear can just get tossed into there. And then over on this side is just more space for gear storage and more gear. And then of course we've got a uh, Fold up the camp table and a couple of camp chairs for hanging out outside when it's nice. All the, uh, the battery and all the electrical setup is over there. And if you watch the other video, you can see how there's a hinged door for it there. Over on this side is where the jack and all the tools and just some extra tools, shovel, things like that are. 
And again, you can access that with a folding door right there if you move the uh, mattress up a little bit. Here's another little detail that when I put it in, we weren't really sure that it was gonna matter, but having a backup camera on a vehicle this big has been super helpful. And the backup camera actually came with this uh, radio from Amazon for 70 bucks. So we can do Apple CarPlay, and we've got a backup camera and all that for $70. Some water bottle holders here. This is just made out of some driftwood. And uh, you just cut all the sides and put some uh, shellac on it. And you got a place to hold your water bottles so they're not rolling around on the ground. Another really nice item that uh, we got that's worked out really well is this uh, water jug, which we just store over on the side of the spare seat. And it's great because it's uh, three gallons of water, so plenty of drinking water. And you can just pull it out really easily and it's accessible. I don't really like drinking the water out of the tubes that come into the sink. Kind of makes the water taste a little bit funny. So this has been a really nice way to have some extra drinking water. So hopefully this gives you some ideas on how to do a really budget, low cost van conversion. Again, the conversion with everything, including all the stuff we did to the cab was $3,000 and the van itself was about $3,000. And we've been using it now for a little over half a year and it's worked great for us. You know, someday we might upgrade to a nice, big, tall Sprinter van or something, but this is great for in the meantime.